Hello my dudes, welcome back to the beginning of a new vlog. It's not a weekly vlog because technically it's Thursday and this is the first day this week that I've been up for vlogging. So this is going to be more of a weekend vlog and this is also going to be a Newt's vlog because I'm participating in the Newt's Magical Readathon this month. So this is going to be week two of the Newt's but before I talk to you about what I'm reading and what I'm going to read for this vlog, I need to catch up on some stuff really. And apologise for my absence, I haven't posted a vlog in a while ever since the week of the reading rush. I didn't quite do it, I didn't get seven daily vlogs out, but I did get five out, and honestly, that's a lot better than I expected I would do. And it was a good week, but I didn't manage to get that last two day vlog out like I wanted to. I was celebrating my birthday that weekend. So I was mostly just hanging out with my friends like the whole time and I didn't read anything. I didn't really vlog much. I have some clips of what we did. We went to an indoor crazy golf place, which was pretty cool. And then on the Sunday, I just hung out with G all day and we went to go see the new Spider-Man movie. So I hardly had any footage for those two days. So I didn't think it was worth putting up a vlog just for that couple of days, especially considering I didn't read anything else. But I really enjoyed the reading rush. I liked putting out the vlogs. I had a really good busy week that week. So then the following week, I kind of crashed and that's why you haven't seen me. <laughs> or a vlog for me. My mental health just took a big dip and I do this thing where when I'm not in a good place, I just retreat from everybody and everything. I retreat from the world. It's a really bad habit. So I really wasn't up for vlogging, so I'm so sorry, but I'm doing all right, I think. And thank you to everybody who sent me messages just asking how I was, checking in with me. It's so appreciated. Thank you so much. But I'm doing okay and I'm back. And yesterday I did post my TBR for the newts, well, just for August in general. I'm so sorry that was late as well. Like literally I tried to film that four times. <laughs> It was just a little bit of a shit show. I wasn't in the right frame of mind and I had some panic attacks and stuff whilst filming. It was just, it was just a mess, but I finally got there, I finally did it. <laughs> but I'm so glad that's finally up and everyone's being so nice. Thank you again, y'all are the coolest. Honestly, the support that I get from you guys is just, it's just amazing and so, so appreciated. But also if you saw that video, you'll know that I did actually manage it in July. I did read all of the books. So for the reading rush, I read four books that week and they fit six of the challenges for the reading rush. So I didn't complete all seven, but I did kind of double up for a couple. But after that week, I had four books to finish. I did finish them all. But since I wasn't vlogging, you won't have heard my thoughts on these. I'm actually going to be posting a July wrap up, hopefully very soon, maybe next week, because there's a couple of other videos I want to post first. So you might not have seen that yet, but I'll just give you a quick overview of what I read at the end of July. So the one that was on the Reading Rush TBR that I didn't get to was Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. I did read this and I don't know how to rate this. I won't give you a synopsis because I've done that so many times in my previous vlogs and it is quite a well-known book generally. And I did know what to expect because I'd seen the movie, but wow. <laughs> This was a lot, like in a good way, but also in a bad way. I'm confused. I do get the hype with this one, but I have no idea how I'm gonna rate it. I can see why people grew up reading this series and loving it. And oh boy, does this include some problematic stuff. But I couldn't look away. I couldn't put this down. I was so enthralled by this. It was kind of like a guilty pleasure. Some scenes were just like, whoa, what did I just read? <laughs> I'll probably give it a free star because, you know, middle of the road kind of book for me because like I said, I couldn't put it down. But this made me feel so uncomfortable in places. It definitely romanticizes certain things. But I like it when books make me feel uncomfortable. So I don't really know. Maybe a free 3.5 for this. I'm still making up my mind. I'll try and get my thoughts in order for the wrap up that I'm hopefully gonna film soon. <laughs> I then also finished out the last 250 pages I needed to read of A Storm of Swords. I don't need to tell you what this is about, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. Happy I did finish it because a lot of stuff happens at the end of that book. And I'm reading the next one this month. And the last physical book I had to read in July was Finale by Stephanie Gabber. The first book is Caravel, so this is the Caravel series. And y'all, I was so disappointed with this book. I'll try and keep it brief, but basically all the things that annoyed me about the first two books in the series were more prevalent in this, and all the things I loved about the first book, especially Caraval, all the mystery and trickery that I loved in it just wasn't in this one at all, really. It was predictable, kind of cringy and cliche in some places, and I got bored, I got bored, but I will say it was such a quick read that honestly, like, I probably could have DNF'd it, but I didn't want to because this was sent to me by Joelle. I'm so sorry, Joelle, that I didn't end up loving this book, but I love you so much for sending it to me anyway. I am glad I finished out this series, but I'm just, yeah, a little bit bummed that I didn't love this one as much as the other two. I had a feeling though, when we had the big reveal in the second book, that I might not have loved the ending, and sadly that was the case. So I'm giving this like a 2.5. It was all right, but disappointing. So, you know, about a 2, 2.5 for that one. And then lastly, I finished the audiobook for Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I gave that a free star. It was just okay. To be honest, I can't really remember much of it. At the time, I was enjoying listening into it, especially I think because it, it's actually annotated by Neil Gaiman. Sorry, narrated by Neil Gaiman. Am I okay? <laughs> 
I do think I preferred the actual movie though, but I do like Neil Gaiman's writing style. He's one of my faves. I like the whimsy, but it was just okay. Three stars for that. But when I finished that one out, um, that meant that basically I had completed all the prompts I needed for the Book Junkie Trials. So the Mage Pack others, so the trials were a success. And now we have the newts this month, so if you watch my TBR, you'll know what I'm currently reading. I'm currently reading A Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I am 386 pages in, so I have about 70-something pages left, and I'm really enjoying it so far. You've probably seen all the hype surrounding this book already. We're following a teenage girl called Elizabeth who grew up in a library. But the books in this library aren't your standard kind of books, they're actually demons. They're called grimoires, and they've been possessed by a demon, so there's like different scales of how dangerous these are. And they need to be kept an eye on and locked away so that they don't actually turn into full-on monsters. However, one day, one of the most dangerous dangerous demons in this grimoire is released and escapes. But Elizabeth gets blamed for it, so she has to go to the capital to go on trial, but she is accompanied by a sorcerer, and she's grown up thinking that sorcerers are all evil, because sorcerers actually make deals with demons in order to get their powers. And in exchange, the demons get some years of their life. So it does give me supernatural vibes, like the crossroad demons. But of course, as you'd expect, the sorcerer is all kinds of dishy, his name is Nathaniel Thorne, and things aren't what they seem, there's a larger mystery, a larger plot in here, and I'm really enjoying it. There's some kind of stereotypical angsty romance in here, which isn't my favourite thing, but I think it's been done well. And I really like the world and the writing style, it is quite fast paced, it does do that thing though, that cliched thing, where a character will faint quite a few times, and that will just move the story on. So yeah, a few things that I'm not loving, but the story is interesting enough that I'm invested. It has taken me a while to read this far, maybe that's just the frame of mind I've been in recently. Yay, depression! But I'm almost done, so I'm hoping to finish that out today. But while I've been away, I've actually accumulated quite a few parcels, and I haven't opened any of them because I want to do it on camera because I was expecting some birthday presents from some booktube friends. So let me just grab those, there's quite a lot. So this intro is probably pretty much the whole of this vlog. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so I have this stack here. Before I open those though, I just wanted to show you, cause I did say in my Reading Rush vlogs that G was gonna get me some presents. Well, she told me she'd got me a book or two for my birthday. And guys, she, she completely spoiled me just like everybody has. So like, why am I surprised? But look what she got me. Y'all, I didn't get my reaction to opening these on camera or anything because I was, you know, hanging out with her and um, celebrate my birthday. But yeah, she got me The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss in these beautiful 10th anniversary editions that now match my Mistborn trilogy that Bobby got me. And this is one of my favourite ever series, one of the first adult fantasy series I read when I first started booktube. She also loves this series, you probably know if you subscribe to G. And I desperately need to reread this series now, especially considering if that date is right on Amazon and we haven't just been completely trolled, we might get the next and final book in the series next year, hopefully. So I really want to reread this. And they're just so beautiful. And thank you again, G, if you're watching. Um, you're the best. I love you. Thank you. So I just wanted to quickly show you those. And yeah, let's move on to... Um, this stack, I guess. I don't really know where to start. Of course, every booktuber I mentioned, G and Bobby too, their channels will be linked in the description. Um, okay, let's start with an Amazon one. So I do have an idea about who has sent me these gifts, but I don't know whose is whose. Also, there's now a cat. I think Tibbs is in the background as well, as always. Okay, oh, I saw the spine immediately before I could look at the notes. But let me just see who this is from. Oh, it's from Rachel. Thank you so much, Rachel. Okay, I've been wanting to try this book. Okay, is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Look how beautiful this copy is. Oh my God. And that naked spine too. Yes. She's serving all the looks today. I've really been wanting to try this book for a while. I did like Uprooted. And this one though, I think is inspired by the Rumpelstiltskin story. So that's all I really need to know about it. I love fairy tales and fairy tale retellings. And I really like Naomi Novik's writing style as well. I've heard great things about Spinning Silver and this cover. My God, this has to be one of the most beautiful books I own. I think I say that all the time about books people send me, but dudes, 
Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and then I have another Amazon one. This is quite thin. I'm not sure what this might, what this could be. From Rachel again. Thank you so much, Rach. You did not need to get me more than one. Oh my God, you didn't. Oh, I'm so excited. I've seen this everywhere. Everyone seems to love this. It's the Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. I literally watched Zoe's vlog yesterday from the newts, uh, read by Zoe, and she was reading this, and she was talking about how beautiful it is, and how amazing, and oh my god, yes, I need to read it. Look, oh. So if you couldn't already tell, this is a graphic novel. And oh my god, the art style. Oh, I've just heard this is so charming. And if you saw Zoe's vlog, you'll know, but she was talking about how you get a little directory of different tea dragons and how to look after them and things at the back. Oh my god, adorable. <laughs> Is that not Bella and Tibbs right there? Like that's Tibbs and that's Bella, right? <laughs> I am so excited for this. I've heard nothing but amazing things. I literally don't have any idea what it's about. I've just heard it's incredibly wholesome and adorable and that I need to read it. So thank you so much, Rach. Thank you, thank you. You chose to bloody good books thank you thank you so much for spoiling me as always of course link to rachel's channel in the description she's the freaking coolest the loveliest and thanks rach oh i really want to read these immediately but they're not on the tbr because i've only just bloody opened them oh regrets so many regrets i might be able to fit the tea dragon society into this month though like Probably, so hopefully I can read that this month. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to a book depository parcel. So I think this one's from my bae Hayley at Hayley Marie Reads. Actually, no, it's just Hayley Marie now, I think. <laughs> okay, I don't think this came with a note. I just have the, like, receipt thingy. Um, but let's have a look. I'm pretty sure this is from Hayley, but I'll double check. <gasps> yeah, it's from Hayley, I know it is, because she's got me volume two of my brother's husband. Oh my god, Hayley, thank you so much. We buddy read the first volume and we loved it. That was a five star from me. If you didn't know, it's a manga series. It's by Gengoro Tagami and we follow Yaichi and his daughter Kana as his now deceased twin brother's husband, Canadian husband, that's confusing, but his Canadian husband Mike comes to visit them in Japan and it's just about him dealing with his grief over losing his twin brother and then coming to terms with his brother's sexuality and then forming a relationship with his brother's husband and changing his misconceptions about what it is to be gay, etc. It's just, it's just so bloody good. I need to see this naked. Okay. That's really cool. Thank you so much, Hayley. Oh, girl. This is just gonna bring me so much joy, but you always bring me joy. Thank you, girl. Oh my God. Okay, that's not it. There's another one in here. Again, being spoiled. And yes, I've been wanting to try this one for so long. She got me a autobiography by Christina Lauren. This is a very popular book on booktube. It's a YA contemporary. I don't know a lot about this book. It's just come highly recommended. I know this is a lot of people's favorite book. And I believe it deals with sexuality and also religion and the conflicts between the two. So very, very excited for this. And also the Contemporary-a-thon is happening next month, isn't it? Because it's September. So this could be perfect. Thank you so much, Hayley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot wait to try both of these very gay books. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you, girl. Freaking love you. And again, of course, Haley's channel is linked in the description. If you haven't already checked her out, please go ahead and do that. So there's a couple more to go. I was expecting um, a book from Gav. So one of these could maybe be from Gav. Y'all know how much I love Gav. Link in description. Okay, so there was two in there. Have you seen Tibbs trying to get my attention in the background? Yeah, you're cute. He has his paws in the air and everything. Okay, so there's a couple of books in here and also a note. So let me just, yeah, this is from Gav. He does say he got me some early birthday presents. He did, he did, he, he went in. That he gave me on the iconic day we met. Yep, going down in history, iconic. So here are a couple of late birthday presents because he wants to give presents on time, disgusting. <laughs> Dude, you did not need to get me any more presents. Although he did offer me one of these and I said, 
Okay, I'll take that off your hand. He's actually included a little synopsis for both of these on here as well because he's just the best. Okay, so this is the one he said he had a couple of copies of and whether or not I wanted one, he would send it to me. And I said, okay, if you wouldn't mind, sir, that would be nice <laughs> because this does sound really good. So this is The Lost Ones by Anita Frank and the tagline is, some houses are never at peace. I believe this is an ARC copy. And he's put on here, The Lost Ones is a woman in black inspired ghost story set in 1970 in an imposing country mansion and is out on October 31st, so Halloween. Perfect. Thanks, mate, for letting me know. <laughs> you did already tell me, but I forgot. <laughs> but a woman in black inspired ghost story. I'm all about that. Thank you so, so much for this one, Gav. And then he sent me another one. I didn't I didn't ask for this one. I, I don't know what this one is. Let's find out together. <laughs> So it's The Vanished Bride by Bella Ellis and it says The Bronte Mysteries and he's put here that it's about the Bronte sisters solving mysteries in 1845. Well, that sounds like so much fun. He's also said that he sent me two proofs that are set way in the past so we don't feel so old. I appreciate that. And this one is out on November 7th. If I ever want to buddy read them, in the words of Wham, I'm your man. Love you lots, Gab. I love you lots. Thank you so, so much for this one too. Completely surprised me with this one. I'm excited. Bronte sisters solving mysteries in Yorkshire in 1845. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, so two proofs from Gav as birthday, extra birthday presents. Dude, far too much. But I say that to you all the time. Thank you so much, Gav. Love you, of course. Link to Gav's channel in the description, as always. And then this last one is actually from HarperCollins, but I haven't requested anything from HarperCollins, so it's not like a birthday present or anything. Um, but let's just see what it is. Okay, so there's no note in here, um, but they did send me an email not so long ago asking if I'd like to just receive their newsletter, I guess, for new titles. And it's a kind of subcategory or subset of HarperCollins. I can't remember the name, but I'll put it on the screen. And they do like thrillers and also um, women's fiction, I believe. And they've sent me two books. I didn't ask for these. So thank you so much to the people at HarperCollins. So we have The Girl Before You by Nicola Rayner, which I'm assuming is a thriller. It says, Alice has always been haunted by the women from her husband's past. As a politician and now a TV personality, George Bell's reputation as a ladies' man precedes him. But when Alice falls pregnant, her unease becomes an obsession. And there's an ex in particular she can't get out of her head, a beautiful student who went missing before they finished university, Ruth. When Alice thinks she sees Ruth on a train, she can't shake the feeling there's more to the disappearance than George has told her. Dodgy husband... But does she really want to know what her husband has been up to behind her back all these years? Yes, she does. She needs to know the truth. That sounds good. Let me know if any of you guys have read this thriller. And then I have this one, which I'm probably not going to read, simply because I don't really think this is my genre. But the title is The Mom Who Got Her Life Back by Fiona Gibson. It says, when her kids leave for university, Nadia's life changes in ways she never imagined. Her Glasgow flat, Scotland, nice feels huge and tidy. The laundry doesn't take up half her week and she no longer has to buy the big milk. But more importantly, Nadia has got her own life back and a budding romance with Jack she's never felt more alive. That is until her son drops out of uni and Nadia finds her empty nest is empty no more. Can Jack and Nadia's relationship survive be having a sulky teenager around? So yeah, not really my thing. My sister or my mum might like this one though. So I just thought I'd show you these two. I think these are finished copies, so I'm not sure when they were released or anything. Um, but I'm sure you'll be able to find them on Goodreads. <laughs> if you're interested. So that's my haul. Thank you again, Rachel, Gav, and Hayley. You guys, I love you guys, you know. And if you haven't checked out the channels, <laughs> links in description. But anyway, I've been talking forever. I usually like to try and keep my intros to my vlogs quite short, but I had a lot to catch you up on and a lot of parcels to open. So yeah, let's proceed with the rest of the vlog. Um, for the rest of the day, I'm going to be hopefully finishing this out today. I might try and finish it out now, um, but I've also got a video to film. My fairy loot just arrived, so I have to film the unboxing for that. And also later, I'm actually going round to G's and we're gonna have a little Newt's reading day. Maybe we will read. We did, we have done before, so possibly. So I'll take this if I haven't already finished it by then and then I'll take something else. I'll let you know what I pick when I do. If you wanna see my full TBR, I will link it in the description. Um, but tomorrow I'll probably decide what I'm actually going to read this week because I have figured out what I'm reading for each prompt. I should have mentioned this one's for charms. Still haven't um, changed the bookmark up. I'm still using 
this one as opposed to the charms one so I will change that up before I go around to G's because it would be really rude of me not to <laughs> so that's the plan and yeah I'll just catch you in a bit I've forgotten how to vlog I'm sorry hey it's been about half an hour I was gonna film my uh, fairy loot unboxing but <sighs> y'all I'm sorry if this is TMI but oh my god I have the worst cramps Feels like there's a demon inside my uterus clawing to get out from the inside, oof. So as much as I'm dying of excitement to open that fairy loot box, I'm also just genuinely dying. So, I didn't need to film it today specifically, like it's, I'm hopefully gonna post it tomorrow so I can just film it on the same day, that's fine, I was gonna film anyway tomorrow. So there's no rush or anything, but I had some time so I figured I would. But yeah, I feel like I'd just be grimacing in pain the whole time, so I'm stet, well, I instead? Instead. I'm gonna read. Well, actually, I'm gonna read and I'm also going to respond to some comments on my Wheel of TBR video. Just get back to people on Twitter. Um, I've got a few hours before probably heading off to G's, so I'll see if I can get some of this read. I do have some reading snacks, thankfully. I planned ahead, which hardly ever happens. Like, who is she? But I went to the corner shop this morning for milk and I also got myself some fish and chips baked snacks, like crisps. There's a motorcycle outside, I'm sorry. It's just obnoxious. I also got myself some, that's upside down, some fingers, but these are the fabulous fingers. So like, not just any fingers, fabulous fingers. I'm gonna sit down. Oh, I also have a cup of tea. I'm trying to hold it really awkwardly to show you it. Shout out to my friend Sarah who got me this mug for my birthday. It's holographic and it says Leo on it. So thanks Sarah, love you. She watches my vlogs sometimes. Anyway, yeah. I'm gonna read for a bit. So I'm gonna actually switch out the bookmark. G really started something when she gave me a set of these. I am a changed woman. Dog earring, we don't know her. Now in truth, I'll probably just use these for the newts then go back to dog earring because I'm the worst. Okay, so I need to find the charms one. They're all so beautiful, here we go. Charms, because the prompt for charms is to read a book that you think has a gorgeous cover. It does have, oh, it's very, very shiny. It has a gorgeous cover. So I'm gonna get under the blanket, got my cup of tea, got my snacks. We're all go. Let's do this. I'm gonna try and finish this out and then I'll let you know what book I'd take with me to G's and what exam that fits, etc. Hey, 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 it's Saturday. I keep forgetting to vlog, I'm sorry. And this is actually gonna be just a quick update because I'm about to rush out because I've got a therapy session. A little bit nervous. I've not been to therapy in a while, but it is, you know, needed. I just don't like talking about my feelings. But I know it's gonna do me a world of good, so I'm just about to head off. But since I last spoke to you, or gave you an update, I was popping around to G's, I think, for a reading date. Yeah, we didn't end up reading. <laughs> Had a lovely time as always though, but I have finished out Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I didn't love this as much as I was hoping I would. I was loving the begin beginning of it, and the more I read, I just started to get less invested. I started to care less. So yeah, I'll talk to you more about it when I've got more time though, probably hopefully later today, if not tomorrow, depending on how the day goes. But I have also picked up another book. I've picked up Lost Boy by Christina Henry. I'm about 100 pages in, really enjoying this one. This, I think, is gonna be my favorite Christina Henry. So far anyway, but I'll let you know more about this again later. Um, I'm reading this one for to get an A, sorry, in arithmancy. No, ancient runes. I'm a little bit frazzled. Yeah, I slept in. <laughs> I do want to get some reading done today because it's actually the magical all-nighter. Started at noon today, goes till noon tomorrow. It's like two o'clock. <laughs> and I haven't read anything yet, but I'm hoping to read some more of this later today. But after therapy, we might be going to go see some free shows with my friends, possibly, because it's the festival now, it's the fringe. You don't know what that is. Basically in Edinburgh, there is a month-long festival. It's mostly like comedy shows, music acts, theatre stuff, all month, every venue, constantly, there's always something happening, street performers everywhere, there's fireworks every night from the castle that go off at like 11-ish, which thankfully aren't too loud where we live, but 
you know, we still hear them. The cats are no longer phased, basically. <laughs> so Edinburgh is basically crazy in August, so hopefully we'll get to see some cool stuff later. Might just go for a walk around. I haven't booked any shows this month. I do want to go see Thrones the Musical, though, because it's the same people that did the Harry Potter musical thing that I saw last year, and it was so funny. It's like the same people, so I really want to go see that. Hopefully at some point this month, but there's free shows on all the time, so we might go see some of those later. Hopefully we'll find some good comedy. It's, oh, it's, uh, it's always a gamble. It's always a gamble when you go to a free show, honestly. <laughs> and I also need to check with my neighbours because I am expecting a parcel. The lovely Steph messaged me and said that she sent me a little something and apparently it was delivered yesterday but I haven't received it so I need to check with my neighbours. Honestly, I'm just starting to think that the delivery people don't want to come up all these stairs, which I mean I get. I am on the top floor so that's a lot so when I get home later today I'll check with my neighbours. I might have an exciting parcel to unbox, which will be very exciting. But yeah, I need to head off, go to therapy. I'm meeting Massey in town. He's just gone into the office for a bit and then we're gonna get some food, hopefully meet up with our friends. And then when I get home, I will read some more because I do want to join in on this, um, the magical all nighter 24 hour readathon thing. Although I am gonna sleep, obviously. But yeah, I'm gonna head out now. Sorry this update's a little bit rushed, but I'll let you know more about the books when I next update you. Before you came round, my heart would never be much faster Before you came round I was ready to slow down Before you came round I was heading for a small disaster Before you came round I was ready to blow me down <laughs> Hey my dudes, it's now Sunday and I kind of failed at the magical all-nighter. I had therapy, it went okay, but I feel a little bit drained now. I cried a little bit, but it was good, it was good. And my therapist is really, really nice. It was a good session. I've got my next one booked in. I've um, got some things to work on in the next however many, well, a week or two. And yeah, it was good. I'm glad I'm back in therapy. Whoa. I knew that would happen at some point. I'm sorry. I am leaning my phone up against the cat post. And Tibbs decided at that moment that he wanted to be on top of the cat post because of course he did. Thanks, Tibbs. What was I saying? Yeah, I had therapy and then I was gonna go see some shows with my friends at the Fringe and then we messaged them. They were gonna go see a show at the Free Sisters but once they got there they realised just how busy it was, like it was absolutely rammed. It was a nice day for the most of yesterday. So town was just a nightmare to get through. It's always like this in August in Edinburgh so they kind of decided just to take the L with that. So we had a cocktail and we went back to theirs. We played some Mario Kart, well the Crash Bandicoot version, which I suck at but still it was a lot of fun. We had some pizza. I got home super late, like past 11 and I tried to read some more of Lost Boy. I read about like two pages and I fell asleep. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying this. But I need to let you know about Sorcery of Thorns. I mentioned yesterday I didn't end up loving this as much as I would have liked. At the beginning of this book, I was sold. I was totally here for this. I love that we had the library setting and all these possessed books, like living books that have demons inside them and they're all a little bit different as to what they can do and they have like different personalities. That was so cool. But I felt like the overall world building was really lacking. We only really found out about this kingdom, nothing outside of that. Are demons a thing everywhere? Are there more possessed demonic books in the world? Do they have the same system with the libraries? I don't know. Yeah, Tibbs shifted his weight and now this is probably rocking because he's decided to clean himself. I could try and put my film somewhere else to film, but I have the charger connected right here. I'm gonna go get him some treats in the kitchen and then I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, he's eating. Let's try this again. I'm sorry this vlog is a mess, but you know... <laughs> Aren't they always a mess? As I was saying, I wanted more world building from this and also the magic in here. We didn't really have any strict rules for, although it was really cool. I really liked the sorcerer dude in this, Nathaniel Thorne, the love interest. He was a little bit of a cliche of a character, but he did give me Nikolai vibes from the Grisha trilogy, and I love Nikolai. He had that kind of wit and banter about him, but he was a bit of a standard bad boy who actually has a heart of gold. But I really liked the dude. Elizabeth, our main protagonist, she was really naive, but I mean, I get it. She grew up in a library, she doesn't really know 
know much about the world, everything had to be explained to her, and she did make some stupid decisions, but I found as I was reading this, about halfway through, I started to care less. The villain in here was very, really generic, and their motivations were unclear, a lot of it was predictable. But this concept is so good, I also love that we had the sorcerers who had their own demon, because it gave me supernatural vibes, because they were making deals with them, and the demons would take part of their life so that they could, they could use their magic, but again, we didn't really have any rules for the magic, it was just like they could basically do anything. And the writing was also really, really good, so I would try more from Margaret Rogerson. But I did start to lose interest in this towards the middle section. It was very fast paced, so there wasn't a lot of build up, but I just didn't get this villain's motivations. And the stakes didn't feel all that high, I don't know. And also, I did like the ending, but then the epilogue kind of ruined it for me. But I will say I loved Silas. There's a character in here called Silas. He's my favourite. Can we just get a spin-off book about him? Like, I'm here for that. But he was really the only character I thought was that interesting and unique. So I think I'm going with a 3.5 for this book. Maybe a 3.75, honestly, because I really did like the concept in the beginning. The writing's good. The ending was just a little bit neat, and I like a messy ending. I like when the stakes feel high, and this didn't feel all that high stakes and that's probably why I wasn't as invested so yeah 3.5 3.75 I can see why people love this book maybe I have just read a lot of fantasy and this didn't feel like anything particularly new towards the end even though the beginning the overall concept concept wow is pretty original I yeah uh, a little bit disappointed with this. I honestly thought it would be a five star, but I'm looking forward to discussing this book for the Read Rate Review Book Club. The live show for it's gonna be on the 14th. I'm now a co-host, which is so cool. And between the co-hosts, it's very mixed as well. Some of them I know love this book, gave it five stars. Then there's some of us like me and G and AJ as well that didn't really love it as much as we'd have hoped. But anyway, I have moved on obviously, as I said, to Lost Boy by Christina Henry. Oh, I should say this was my A for Acceptable Four Charms. This one I'm reading for A for Ancient Runes, which is to read a book that's recommended by a friend. This was kindly sent to me by my girl, Joelle. And y'all, I love this so far. I'm still only like 100 pages in, but this is, if you didn't already know, Christina Henry writes creepy retellings of your traditional fairy tales. I haven't ever read Peter Pan and I really need to, but I do know about the original story somewhat from from Jen Campbell's series about fairy tales. If you haven't checked out Jen Campbell's story, like fairy tale <laughs> series that she does on her channel, highly recommend it. You'll find out all the original stuff if you haven't read the original like Hans Christian Andersen stuff. She's a good place to start. I don't know if that made any sense what I just said, but I wanna read Peter Pan, especially now I'm 100 pages into this. Oh my God. As always, Christina Henry's writing style is so, so good. It's really fast paced, but I'm a little bit bummed that I knew whose perspective this is from. And I've already told you, like in my TBR and stuff, I said who is the main character of this. And I really wish I'd gone into this not knowing, honestly. But nonetheless, our main character is a guy called Jamie. It's told from his point of view, and he's one of Peter's lost boys. He was the original one that Peter stole from the other world and brought to this island. And this island, y'all, is so scary. There are the many-eyed monsters on here, which are basically huge spiders from what I can tell. <laughs> Tips is moving again. Stop. And now I'm joined by Bellatrix. I'm hoping she doesn't try and climb the uh, cat post as well. Will you stay with down here with me, please? Don't you dare. She's going to scratch it. Don't you dare. Yay, she didn't. She's the good one. Like, we have the bad cat and we have the good cat. We love them both, but like, she's the good one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tibbs, it's true. <laughs> But anyway, as I said, this is from the perspective of Jamie, who's the original Lost Boy, and he's basically the mum to all the other Lost Boys that Peter keeps acquiring and collecting. Because every time one of them dies, whether that be by raiding the pirates that come to the port on this island, or getting killed by one of these many eyes, or, you know, by a crocodile, or disease. Peter doesn't necessarily care and he will just replace them with somebody new but Jamie does and he tries to keep everybody alive. But it's also incredibly interesting because every single lost boy absolutely adores Peter. So does Jamie. They're completely enthralled by him. He's so whimsical and he weaves this spell over them and they just believe everything he says but you know Peter lies. But he's such an interesting character. He's so manipulative and he definitely has a lot of issues. I don't want to diagnose the guy but he's kind of a psychopath so it's so interesting the relationships people Peter has with all of these boys and how they just adore him. But Jamie's story is so interesting because I know who Jamie becomes and I'm trying to be vague but a lot of you will know anyway because I've already said it in previous videos. And I have a feeling as to what's going to happen and why that becomes the eventual thing and the eventual story that we all know. But I'm so interested in seeing how that happens. I love this. I'm completely enthralled. And I'm definitely going to try and read the whole thing today because, oh my god, 
I love this. It's quite a fast read, as I said. It's only got like 300 pages, so I've got about 200 pages to read. I think it's gonna fly by, because I just need to know how it's gonna happen. I need to know what Peter's secrets are. Oh, so good. Yes, this is gonna be my favorite Christina Henry, I know. Unless something that I don't like happens towards the end or whatever. Oh my God, this is so good. But you may have noticed I had this sat next to me. This is such a huge box. Steph, what did you do? I popped around to some of my neighbors yesterday, but not a lot of people were in. But I just checked this morning and one of my neighbors had this. And like I said, this is from Steph. She has a channel at Steph Loves. I've only recently discovered Steph, but she's an absolute gem. British, love me a British booktuber. <laughs> she has great taste in books and she's the absolute sweetest and loveliest. And like I said, she sent me a little something. Well, little, <laughs> perhaps not, but let's see what's inside. Okay, I am so excited. Like I said, I'm feeling a little bit deflated today. So this is, this is so lovely. Thank you so much, Steph, before I even open this. Like, I just appreciate it so much. Just the offer alone, Girl, thank you. Whatever it is, I already love you, okay. Oh my God, you did not, Steph. This is far too much. I say that with everybody, I swear to God. But this time, like, I genuinely mean it. Oh my. The note was underneath it, but I'll read the note before I show everybody what it is. It says, hey babe, I hope you're having a better week this week. I am now, thank you. Here's a little bit of magic for you because everybody needs this on their shelves. Loads of love, Steph. And yes, I needed this on my shelf because I don't actually have this. Oh, it's heavy, y'all. She got me the illustrated edition of the first Harry Potter book, The Philosopher's Stone. And this is the one Harry Potter book I don't own because my mum lost my original copy. I have all the rest. She couldn't find the first one. So I've been on the lookout for the original um, hardbacks of it, but, but there's so hard to find and I've been wanting these illustrated editions for so long. Thank you so much, Steph. Oh my God, yes, you're right. I need this in my life <laughs> and I needed this on my shelf. Oh my God. I've never actually seen it in person, like in bookstores and stuff. I've never like properly looked at it and the illustrations, but this is it naked. And then we have the beautiful end papers. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this or own it, <laughs> but it's so beautiful. Oh my God, and the fact that you got me this during the newts as well. I'm gonna have to read this this month, aren't I? Oh, the illustrations. This is the most magical thing ever. Oh my God. It's my boy Dumbledore. Thank you so much, Steph. You really didn't have to go in this hard, but oh my God, do I appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, I'll link Steph's channel in the description. Please do go show her some love. She is the freaking coolest and sweetest and Oh man, thank you. Okay, I need to go message you and let you know that I have it and just say thank you, but oh my God. I have been so spoiled recently and like every day I'm just more and more grateful that I even have a booktube channel and that I've got to know all these lovely people and oh, I'm just feeling it, okay? I'm not gonna cry, but I am feeling a little bit emotional today. <laughs> but I'm just gonna try and take it easy today and I'm going to read, so right now, I'm going to read, hopefully, all of Lost Boy, and then I might pick up afterwards. Let me go grab a couple of options. Sticking with Ancient Runes, I might read the next book to get E, which is to read a book that's set in the, well, written in past tense. So I chose Life Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pecknan. I am kind of in a thriller mood, and yep, <laughs> he switched positions. Or I could move on to Arithmancy, and for A, I need to read a book that has an even page number. I chose Heartstopper Volume 2. This won't take me long. It'd be nice to read this one maybe today, but I really want to read Recursion by Blake Crouch. I haven't put it, like, like set it as a specific exam or subject for the newts yet, um, but I know G's loving it. Like, she was telling me today, like, I need to read this, so I kind of want to maybe switch this out instead of this one. I don't know, I'll see what I feel because I'm pretty sure both of these are written in past tense. I'll double check with G because she's reading it just to see if it is. Um, but yeah, maybe one of these after I read Lost Boy. But this clip's been super long. This vlog is just gonna be so rambly. I am so sorry, but I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna go read The Lost Boy and then I will let you know my thoughts on it later. But I am, oh, is it too early to say 100 pages in that I think this is gonna be a five star? Maybe, I think it's gonna be a five star. Let's see if I'm right. <laughs> hey, it's a lot later now. Sorry if the lighting's awful. It's just been raining all day. But I've been slowly making my way through this book. Today, I stopped and hung out with Massey for a bit and I've been cleaning and stuff. So it's a lot later in the day now. But I'm about 200 pages in and there's been a couple of times where I like screamed, no. And Massey was like, are you okay? 
<laughs> this is so good. There's some shocking things. One of them, I expected something like that to happen, but it was done in a different way. I don't know. I just really like this. So I've actually run a bath. I've just had dinner. I've run a bath. I'm going to try and read the last 100 pages in the bath. And then I'm taking some other options because of course I am. <laughs> oh, I also keep forgetting to say, this reminds me a lot of Lord of the Flies. Like it's that kind of vibe. Oh, just loving it. <laughs> but bath options. Once I finish that, I'm going to try and read all of Hats of Volume 2. I do tend to spend like an hour or two in the bath so I can probably get those read in the bath um, but I'm also going to take with me the wife between us and recursion just in case but yeah um, I'll hopefully give you an update later today and let you know final thoughts on Lost Boy and Hatstopper hopefully but if not I will just give you an update tomorrow <laughs> hey it's me and it's been a while it's now Wednesday my dudes I had a couple of bad mental health days the last couple of days which has been really inconvenient and I haven't finished out this vlog and told you about what I've read but because I had a couple of days where I wasn't doing great I did actually read quite a bit so I need to tell you about them and I'll do my best not to babble on so much because I have edited most of this vlog and I know it's pretty long already but I need to gush about this book y'all five stars this was great it was dark and twisty and atmospheric some parts really shocked me I loved the ending although still I am bummed that I knew whose perspective this was from the off because that would have been a nice reveal at the end so if you haven't read this book yet and this is the first time you've listened to me talk about it don't look up who it is just go ahead and just read this it's so good I wish I hadn't have known but still it didn't impact on my enjoyment at all of this book even though I knew it's still a five star book for me hands down my favorite Christina Henry book the hype is real with this this slaps. It is really brutal though, so just know that if you want to read it. If you don't like bad things happening to children, do not read this book. But I can't recommend this enough. I flew through it. It didn't take me very long. Completely engrossed, completely invested. Oh, this was just so well told. I love this book. And now I really want to read Peter Pan. <laughs> Moving on to another five star, I did end up reading Heartstopper in the Bath as well. This is volume two, we pick up straight after the first volume. Again, I just knew, I knew this was gonna be a five star. Like the first one was, it was just obvious. This is so cute. <laughs> after reading such a dark and twisted book, this is exactly what I needed. It was just a lovely breather. Oh my God. I felt like the Grinch in my heart just grew like 10 more sizes after I'd read this. It had me feeling all emotional at the end as well. Like I almost cried a happy tear of joy in parts of this. It deals with some harder, harsher topics as well as Alice Oseman's books do. I, I can't get enough of this series and I cannot wait to read the next one. I may have to go on Tumblr at some point and see if the third one's there. I'm not sure if it will be already, um, but yeah, I don't know if I can wait. <laughs> this is so good. If you haven't read this yet, absolutely adorable. It's just the sweetest, cutest male male romance I think I've read. And then the last couple of days as well, I read The Whole of the Wife Between Us by Gray Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. With it being a thriller, I can't tell you too much about it, but it's a split perspective. We have a chapter from a woman called Vanessa, and then we have a chapter from a woman called Nellie. Nellie is engaged to this new guy, Richard, and we find out from the off that Vanessa is his wife, well, soon to be ex-wife. So he's left her for a younger woman, Nellie. So lots of creepy stuff happens. Nellie thinks she's being followed. She keeps getting calls from a random number but she doesn't know who's there. Vanessa has a lot of bitterness about her ex-husband, well soon to be ex, and his new wife. And my intrigue was peaked pretty quickly when I started reading this because we find out that both of these women have, you know, secrets in their past and what's really going on with this Richard dude, all of that stuff. But I didn't love it. <laughs> And y'all, I literally think it's because it's a domestic thriller. That's one haul it because if you didn't know, this was my second chance book that came up on the wheel, uh, which is because I don't usually like thrillers that are set around like a husband and a wife and affairs and stuff. And this was very much that. I will say I can see the hype with this. This thriller has a shock reveal in the middle that I liked. But I predicted. I always bloody predict it. Honestly, I hate that I do that. I wish I could go back in time so that I hadn't have read so many thrillers and then maybe this would have shocked me, this like middle reveal, because it was cleverly done. And that did pick things up a notch because it was a little bit slow, a little bit meandering. And that had me intrigued again. But then it just kind of meandered again towards the end. We had another shock reveal at the end, which I did like, didn't see coming, but it wasn't as shocking as the first one would have, be would have been if I hadn't have predicted it, if that makes any sense. But I just got a little bit bored, y'all. It's very character focused. And although I did empathize with both of these women, it just, I just didn't care that much. <laughs> and we really did have to wait a long time until we got that last reveal in the last chapter. And by then I just didn't care as much. So I just wasn't as invested and shocked, I guess. And that's what I want from a thriller. I want to be shocked. I can see why other people's 
other people will love this book. I highly recommend it to people who like domestic thrillers and as well those who like a couple of twists in a thriller rather than having to wait till the very end. But I just don't think domestic thrillers are for me, y'all. I got bored. Maybe it wasn't violent enough. I don't know. I don't know what that says about me, but yeah, I don't know what I'm rating this one. I think I'm just gonna give it a free star. It was okay. I see why people love it. It's just not my sub-genre, I guess, of thrillers. I like them to be a bit more brutal and a little bit more action-packed and plot-based as opposed to just being completely character-driven and also this meandered, like I said, and I just didn't care as much. Um, yeah, bummed that I didn't love it. I see why others do. That makes sense. Free stars. I just rambled on about that one for a while, but let's just wrap up what I read this week. So this week I read four books and they all fit for Newt's challenges. So firstly, I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I gave this one a 3.75. I know that's really picky. I just, I did really like some things about this, but I just lost interest towards the end. I don't know if maybe that was just the like, headspace I was in, but I also found the ending to be wrapped up too nicely for me. That's just like a personal choice, I think. But a 3.75, I'm looking forward to talking about this one for the Read Rate Review live show, which will be on the 14th of September. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. And this one was for an A for Charms. I then read Lost Boy by Christina Henry, five stars. I just gushed about this one. Yeah, this one was for A for Ancient Runes. Heartstopper Volume 2 as well, I absolutely loved. Five stars. Oh, Alice Oseman is just the best. And uh, this was for an A for Arithmancy. And then for an E in Ancient Runes, I read The Wife Between Us, so not bad. Four books down, four exams down. So even though this vlog is super messy, I had a pretty successful reading week. So I'm gonna leave this vlog here because I know it's super long, but let me know if you're participating in the newts, how you're doing with your exams. And I'm sorry this was all over the place. I'm sorry it's going out on a Wednesday Wednesday rather than Tuesday like I'd like it to. I am struggling a little bit but I'm trying so bear with me I'm doing my best and hopefully the vlogs from now on will be a little bit cleaner and a little bit more interesting. I'm trying. <laughs> but thank you for being here and hanging out with me for a bit. I hope you're doing all kinds of well. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so as always and I will catch you in the next one my dudes. Bye y'all.